Hi, Nancy here with more Nature Notes with Nancy. Today we're going to be looking at birds. Well, actually listening to birds more than anything. I've got a red-eyed vireo singing in the background that I could identify by its sound. Today we're going to match the sounds with the birds to help you identify them as well. Let's start with some birds that are easy to identify based on the sound that they make. Scientists actually named the birds after the sound that they make, like the killdeer. Sounds like it's saying, kill deer, kill deer, kill deer. Another easy one to remember is a bird that's predominantly blue and says J. The Eastern Phoebe is an early bird back to the hardwood forest. Its sound tells its name. The Eastern Wood Peewee also sounds like its name, saying Peewee, Peer. Listen for this one. We're all familiar with chickadees saying chickadee dee dee, but in the springtime the males change their tune to sound a little bit more appealing. To some, it sounds like it's saying, hi, sweetie. To others, it sounds like, cheeseburger. The American robin is a bird familiar in town and city and even in the country. And the sound that a robin makes is different than its name. Listen carefully and see if you can find the phrasing. Cheerly, cheer up, cheerily. Once you hear that sound, now you know it's a robin. Great horned owls actually mate way back in January and February, but they can still be heard talking to one another out in the forest. <coughs> Who's awake? Me too can often be heard. <coughs> The female bird has a lower tone to her voice because she's a larger bird. Birds of prey, the females are larger because they're better hunters. The barred owl gets its name because of the stripes on its chest looking like bars. The sound that it makes, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? See if you can hear that in a song. The white-throated sparrow is often heard in the summertime and in movies as well. Here in Canada, we say it's saying, Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. In the United States, they think it's saying, Poor Sam Peabody, Peabody, Peabody. Listen carefully and see if you can hear what we hear. Scientists are actually studying this bird because it's changing its tune. They're finding out that it's not using the full phrases anymore. The bobolink is a handsome bird found out in the grasslands as well. And this bird, well, it doesn't have a phrasing that we could remember, but it certainly sounds like R2-D2 from Star Wars. Kind of sounds like he's been short-circuited. If you've ever been walking in the woods, you've heard this bird before, the white-breasted nuthatch. It will follow you, making certain that you don't get any of the food that it's stored in the bark of trees. <laughs> this 
Song Sparrow is given a proper name because of its interesting song that it makes. Listen to this one. See if you can find the phraseology in this. Red-winged blackbirds will often mark their territories with song. Their territory is about a meter square, and if you happen to walk by, or if another bird flies by, they'll let out their song. Conquery. I'll finish off with a bird, one of my favorites, the oven bird. It's about the size of a sparrow, very small in size, but very loud in voice. This bird gets its name because it makes its nest on the ground looking like an old fashioned oven. Listen carefully to this one. Very loud for such a tiny bird. Listening to the sound that the bird makes and its phrasing helps us to identify the birds a little faster. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time on Nature Notes with Nancy.